Ah. Right. Yep. So, where do you want all this? You know better than to interrupt me when I'm in wardrobe. I brought your makeup kit. Damn, girl, why didn't you say so? Now go away, because you and I both know another interruption is going to lead to certain death. Like your mother's cooking. What did you say about my mother's cooking? I'm sorry, I thought you were making an obscure Die Hard reference. I was just playing off of you. Why would I make an obscure Die Hard reference? If I were going to make one, I would say, Happy Trails, or Thanks for the Advice, or yippee ki you motherfucker! Since John McClane is the greatest action hero of all time, any reference, obscure or otherwise, is welcome for discussion. He is the everyman hero this world deserves, I agree. But quoting the rather droll and uninspired fifth film only detracts from four other great films that we can quote. Even a bad McLean film kicks the ass of every other action movie out there. That's true. Thank you. Come on, guys, we need to shoot. And besides, starting in the second film, John McLean's basically a superhero. He is no longer the everyman we deserve nor need. You take that back. Oh, really now? You heard him. John McLean not only saves his wife and family from destruction multiple times, he also never condescends to his rather long line of black sidekicks. Samuel L. Jackson in the third one, Barnes in the second, Argyle and Carl Winslow in the first. Oh, actually it was Sergeant Al Powell in the first one and his real name is Reginald Bell. He will always be Carl Winslow to me! But plus, anyway, McLean also is an indestructible, even in the PG-13 version of the fourth one. You mean the only version? There's an unrated version. Oh, it's so awesome. It gets to drop all the F-bombs. <laughs> it's awesome. My point is, is that by the end of every Die Hard movie, McLean is bruised, battered, and covered in blood, thus confirming his humanity and his lack of superpowers. You two gonna let me talk? Good, because it's time for both of you to listen. In the first film, yes, John McLean is the everyman hero who barely survives and in fact almost dies several times. In the second film, he gets blown out of an airplane, shot out while a snowmobile explodes, and survives falling off of an airplane. He also defeats a platoon of special black ops soldiers after they annihilate a SWAT team. Not impossible, but homeboy must have drank some Felix Felicis before heading to that airport. In the next film, he survives a runaway subway car getting blown out of an aqueduct, swings from a metal tow cable, falls hundreds of feet from said tow cable onto a steel tanker, and he caps off the film by making an impossible shot with a revolver that hits an electrical wire just right so it swings and destroys a helicopter. Let's not forget that in the next film, he destroys another helicopter, this time with a car, and survives an encounter with an F-35 jet. Well, at least the rest of the movie was realistic. Shut up, you're helping her point. And in the ridiculous fifth film, he basically beats the bad guys by punching a helicopter to death. I don't know what Bruce Willis has against helicopters, but they do not survive his films. How dare you? Sullying the name of the great John McClane. Ugh. Shit. Guess we're not shooting today. Good. Because I wasn't fucking finished.